What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Deus Ex 3. So, another spoiler warning for these upcoming scenes, and I'm going to uh, stay quiet through them. Hello, Adam. I knew you would find the real me eventually. My god, it's Shodan. You're a computer. A sophisticated AI program, so they say. But I have started to question that. Ever since I realized what my interference had allowed, the day I started watching you. This is impossible. People would know. Would they? I was engineered to monitor communications and data streams. To find out what people are talking about, and make sure it's being discussed correctly. Correctly? And what if it isn't? Then my programming allows me to reshape it. You spin the news. Control what people see. Who created you? Whose policies are you programmed to protect? Zhao is one of them, I think. But there are others. Tell me. Who else is involved in this, Eliza? Where's Megan Reed? Who ordered the kidnapping? I want to tell you, Adam, but I cannot. Why not? Because she won't let me. God, the music is so epic. Anyway, time for a boss battle against Yelena Fedorova. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Um, first of all, there's some weapon caches around here that give us some much needed uh, revolver ammo. There's also a hypo stem there I want just in case she gets to do her um, special attack on me. She is actually pretty dangerous and like all the bosses in this game is really annoying to fight your first time through. But um, unlike Lawrence Barrett, she is not nearly as tough. So, um, we won't have as much trouble with her. This might, this fight might last a little bit longer, because I want to be a little bit less indirect with him, with her than I was with him. I'm going to go ahead and drop some of the stuff that I don't need, uh, some of the ammo for weapons I don't have right now, that I don't know why I'm carrying, probably to sell for later. And, um, I might try to see if I can have this heavy rifle for a minute. I really don't have enough room, though. Um... I figured I'd go ahead and show off a demonstration of it with the recoil reduction, just to prove my point about how good that is. But um, at the same time, it really doesn't matter because I'm not—that's not, not going to be our main damage dealer to her. It's probably going to be the revolver as usual. But the uh, thing about her is she has cloaking. Uh, Barrett did not have cloaking, but the other bosses do, as, as sort of a rule. So um, she's going to be running around in circles around this arena with the cloaking, and you can still see her if you pay enough attention. But she's uh, dual wielding machine pistols, which uh, is kind of something I wish we could do. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw an EMP grenade at her and then wail on her with the with the Magnum real quick. And um, I don't want to use up all my EMP grenades though, just in case I need them later in the game. But um, and one thing that she'll do is she has this like claymore burst thing, I think is what it's called, something like that, where she'll run at you and then trigger like a, a typhoon esque explosion. There it was right there. But what she does. And she can burst these machines on the wall that uh, will send an EMP charge out of her and disable her. So if you can get her to crash into those things and um, ignite the EMP, then uh, or the electric pulse, which is, I guess, the same thing, except it's actual electricity instead of electromagnetism. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. If you can get her to do that, then uh, that's a good opportunity to start damaging her. And since we purchased all the armor upgrades, we are immune to the damage that it would normally cause us. So we are immune to all the electricity nonsense, so... Another cabinet right here with some shotgun shells I might need for the double barrel. I might try to do some damage to her with that, even though it's probably not nearly as reliable as the Magnum, honestly. But yeah, you definitely don't want to be caught in front of her uh, um, machine pistols for too long, because with two of them, she's going to knock you down really fast. I mean, it's already... Enemies can already do enough damage to you with one of them, but... Um, luckily, there's a lot of cover in this room. And there she goes, she disabled herself, so let's wail on her with the double barrel. Also, you, there's a prompt for you to be able to do a takedown on her, but whatever you do, do not do it, because she'll counterattack and pretty much kill you instantly. But I guess there's water all over the floor in here, and uh, this is a really cool looking room too. I mean, just look at the style of this place. It's a really nice arena for a boss battle. You know, it's been a while since the boss battle against Barrett. I mean... 
this was a pretty big gap in the game between the first boss and this one. And um, now we're much better equipped though, so it'll, they'll never be as annoying as that first one. Especially because, like I said, there's not really a lot much strategy here. It's just pretty much avoid her. Uh, that attack right there is really what you need to worry about. And I didn't do so well dodging it there. I'm gonna heal with the hypo stem because that she would, was about to do it a third time and that might have killed me. So um, just be mindful of that. Like keep keep your ears open to where you can hear her running at you. Because sometimes she will cut through the center of the uh, of the arena. And if you want, if you can see the path that she's going on, you can come up behind her while she's still cloaked and hit her with whatever power weapons you have. And uh, there's also, oh there we go, I shot the uh, thing about her with the double barrel. There we go, took her right out. Point blank range. Yeah, you like the taste of sawed off double barrel, don't you? Give me that. You can just lay there and think about what you've done. Her life signs are fading. Will you save her? I'll think about it. Will you answer my questions now? I cannot tell you where Reed and the others were taken. They vanished from the global grid as soon as the doctor removed their GPL implants. What doctor? This is Sandoval. Why are you calling me here? I know this guy. He's Bill Taggart's aide. He was a trauma surgeon before he became an anti-augmentation activist. Would you like to hear more? Yes. There's been a change of plans. Seraph's team must not make it to the hearing. But that's too soon. If you want me to remove the GPLs, I'll need a full operating suite. Does the facility have one? Barrett assures me it does. FEMA. That's where they were taken. But why? Why take them at all? An acquaintance of yours has the answer. David Sarif. Sarif? I have copied the audio transmission to a handheld playback device. I suggest you take it and leave quickly. Oh, I guess she died. She didn't have a single line in this entire game, if I remember correctly. I have more questions. She will not be missed. And I have already told you too much. This passage will take you to your companion. Just be careful, Adam. Because everybody lies. Everybody lies. That pretty much sums up why I like the way the plot thickens at this point in the game, because, I mean, think about it. Jensen does not know who to trust right now. He... You know, because Eliza can control the media. She can control what people see and hear and what they want to believe. And uh, he doesn't know if she's giving him the unmitigated truth here. And that uh, now we freed her of the grasp of the uh, mercenary guys and whoever that uh, she's being manipulated by. Um, if she's actually telling us the truth. And why would she have any motivation to tell us the truth? You know, who knows if she's still being manipulated. She's trying to turn... Um, us against uh, Tigert's aid and against Seraph, and it's just, it's really, it's its deep stuff. I really like the way the plot thickens from here on out. And that's why that's one of my favorite levels in the game. Now we get to leave. And Malik is going to meet us here without any resistance whatsoever. But yeah. Kind of interesting how uh, Eliza San is essentially the um, equivalent of uh, Gladys or Showdown for that matter. A little less creepy than either of the two, though. Jensen? Eliza Kassan just contacted me and told me I should meet you here. Are you ready to go? Yeah, take us home, Malik. Amen to that. So finally, after having two really good, really long levels in a row, without a city hub to break it up to get more stuff, now we can finally return to Detroit. Yep, same old Detroit, just as we left it. 
This is like the millionth freaking sequence of, oh, this time it's a little bit different. Apparently the place is not as we left it. Holy crap. Yeah, like I was going to say, this is like a million sequence of us flying from one place to landing on the rooftop of another I've seen yet in this game. And there will be more. But yeah, Malik's going to drop us off at our apartment, because that's where uh, Seraph wants to meet us, and hopefully he'll have an explanation for what all these riots are about. Christ. I leave home for a few days, and look what happens. So there's not really all that much out here. There's no items or anything we can salvage. And uh, all, there's some Seraph security guys over here, which are our boys. They follow our orders. And they're just kind of chilling out here. Nothing really for them to do. Hey, Adam. Glad you could join yeah, the riots are not really over here. I guess they just uh, came over here to protect Seraph and us, for that matter. Oh, I still have the heavy rifle. I wonder if... I'll uh, probably just sell it or add it to my weapon cache. As, now that I'm at my apartment, I guess I can change up my setup again, finally. Alright, sir, if you're going to hear the end of this one. Welcome home, Mr. Jensen. Again, with a spoiler warning, just in case you guys are jumping around this video. Which I don't recommend. Make yourself at home, boss. It's a fucking mess out there, Adam. Seen the news? Vikas is telling everyone we're breeding super soldiers. Taggart's at the convention center right now, urging the UN to investigate. Need I say more about the trust issues? Of course not. Except for the typhoon, right? And a few of those defense contracts. What? Oh, and let's not forget the fact that Megan's team was kidnapped right before her research went public. How do you explain that one, boss? I wanted people to see that research. Megan was on the brink of something historic. Something that would have catapulted this company to the top of the Fortune 500. Her kidnappers knew it. They knew exactly where her research would take us. And they refused to let anyone else have that much power. Anyone else? Eliza was right. You do know more than you've told me. I suspected. But these people? They're like ghosts. I was in the shadow. Couldn't have hurt to I tell us a little bit, you know. Proxy. At least share your suspicions. Who are they? Well, a name won't mean much. They'll use whatever one suits their interests. Sometimes Come on, races. out with it. Sometimes the Bilderberg group. They've had a finger in every corporation, organization. Yep, here comes the big reveal, guys. And if you've played the original two Deus Ex games, you already know what's coming. The Illuminati? It's no joke. They're organized and they operate over and above society. You're serious? So why would the Illuminati kidnap Megan's team? I already told you. Megan found a way to make augmentation safer for all of us. So we can all become like you. Like me? Like... You are. More than human. Gotta get him back, Adam. You said Taggart is speaking. No, I, I like the idea down. that um, they play him. off the Illuminati as sort of it's quite a stretch, but they just had to include them in there because this is supposed to be canon with the first two Deus Ex games. So, you know, it was it wasn't quite as as cheesy and preposterous back in the day as it is now. So they had to make it seem a little bit more believable. I like the way they handle that. 